Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and today we're going to be doing another SQL tutorial. And what we're going to be focusing on is Union All, uh, which is a type of set operation within SQL Server. Now, I have done a, another video just covering an introduction to set operators on my channel, so if you haven't checked that out already, go and check that out. Um, what we're going to be covering in this video is how to be com how to combine multiple result sets. Uh, we're going to be using union all with a where clause, uh, union all with an order by clause, and we're also going to be looking at how to use union all with temporary tables within SQL Server as well. Now remember the rules, like I say we have covered this uh, in the introduction to set operators within SQL Server video. Um, so the rules are the number and order of columns must be the same and data types must be compatible. So let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio now and we'll go through some examples. So here we are in SQL. Uh, we're just going to start off by looking at a couple of tables we've got within our database, the bookshop. Uh, they are customers and customers import. So I'm just going to run a couple of selects just to show you all of the data within those two tables. So in our first table, customers, uh, we've got some general details about the customers. We've got a customer ID. And in our second table, customers import, that's really just a staging table for us to bring in our customers. Um, we haven't got an ID in there, but we've got various bits of information. So now let's go through a scenario where we want to combine the results of these two select statements. Uh, now remember the rules that the number of columns has to be the same, the order of the columns has to be the same. Um, for it to work properly and also the data types have to be compatible. So let's have a quick look at initially how to write a union all statement. So I'm going to change my query initially. We're going to return the first name, the middle name. Let's say in this scenario we just want to return all of the names in both of these tables. So we're going to write our first select statement, which is just going to take the first name, middle name, and last name from our customers table. And then in our second statement from the customers import, we're going to take our first name, middle name, and surname. Now notice how the column names are different as well. So in our first table, they start with C underscore. In our customers import table, we've just got names there. So in between those two queries, to combine these two results into one set that's returned, I'm going to write union all. So that tells SQL, combine these two select statements for me into one result set. So if I execute that now, we've got 27 results. If I just run the first statement independently, uh, we've got 17 there. And at the second statement, we've got 10. So we would be expecting 27 rows to be returned. And we've got one result set that gives us the first name, middle name, and last name of all our customers. Now notice how within my first input, it's taken those column names. And in the second input, it's just ignored those and added them to the first result. So if you want to get around that, you can always add an alias. So you can always say as a first name, as middle name. And you'll notice you don't have to do this with the second input. It will automatically take the first column names from the first input here. So if we, we've we aliased those columns now, if we go and execute that, we can see we've got the results as first name, middle name, and surname. We haven't had to do anything with the second input set. So that's just a quick example of how to combine two result sets from two separate select statements. Let's have a look at a, another example in more detail. Imagine if we wanted to use a WHERE clause within our union all statement. Now what's quite interesting about applying a WHERE clause is you don't have to apply a WHERE clause to both result sets. Remember, the sets are independent of each other and then the union all will just combine those together. 
So if for my first query I wanted to add a where C first name equals Michael and then execute that query we can see we've now gone down to 11 results because if I run the first statement independently I've only got one customer called Michael within that result set within the customers table um, so I've only got a small amount of customers in these tables at the moment and then if I was to run the second one again we've got uh, 10 results in there so combined together we're going to have 11 so I could then add a where clause to the second one to say where the first name equals Julia and run that and then we'll get the combined results of those two sets there as well so if you're working with a where clause you don't have to add it to both queries as long as the queries can run independently and they meet the rules of the data types being compatible and the number of columns being the same then it would return the same the, the correct results uh, just talking about the number of columns being the same if I add a second uh, sorry a, th a fourth column to our select statement so say if I wanted to return a uh, date of birth as well we can now see we've got a different amount of columns between those two those two statements so the first one we're only selecting three columns and in the second result we're only ret we're returning four so if I was to execute that we'll get an error saying all queries combined with set operators must have an, e an equal number of expressions in their target list so that's referring to columns it must have the same amount of columns uh, present in each query so I'll just take off the date of birth now let's imagine we want to I'll take out the where clause for now that's we've gone through that example let's imagine we want to order this result so within our customers table we want to say order by first name and within our second result we want to say the same order by first name as you can see there the union all statement has been highlighted to say that this is not a correct statement because if I try to execute that it will give me an incorrect syntax error so if we wanted to order our final result set we just needed to add that after the statement so not within our first input union all doesn't accept an order by clause within the first input but after the second result set we can add an order by there so what the database engine is actually going to process is those initial select statements and then it's going to combine the result and then it sees there's an order by there so it knows to process that last and if I process that now as we can see we've got the result set ordered by the first name now with working with union all or any of the set operators as well we are not restricted to just two result sets that we can combine together we can also combine another table so we could add a, another table in this case I'm going to look at a table called my employees which is just a copy of a table from a popular database that you may have seen before so let's take out the middle names on these queries because that's not stored within this table um, so we're just going to be working with first name and surname at the moment so again we'll take out the order by clause because that needs to be the last statement within our full query so then what we're going to do is union all again to select first name last name again this is a, a different column name but it will be picked up by our first query where we're alias in those columns and this is from the employees table so this is going to combine all the results of our customers table all the results of our customers import table and all the results of our employees table and we'll add on an order by there again so if we process that now we've got an error 
to say we should have an equal number of expressions and the error is caused because I haven't put my comma within the customer's import table. So if I run that again, we can now see we've got 34 rows. So I'm expecting when I run this query from the My Employees table independently, it should show us seven, which is correct. So I'll just execute that again. So again, that's combining the results of three sets. So we're not limited to just working with two sets. And I'm not sure if there is actually a maximum uh, of the number of sets you can combine. There probably is a maximum, but you're probably never going to reach that. It's probably set something, knowing Microsoft, they've set it ridiculous, like a thousand um, sets that you can combine. And imagine a scenario where you'd want to do that. There'd be much better ways to do that in terms of performance anyway. Another thing I just wanted to pick up on, guys, while we've got this result set in front of us, is notice that Andy Jackson and a few other names appear twice in our result set. And that's because they exist in both the customers and the customers import table. So what you will notice about the union all operator is that duplicates are still returned so if they if those names exist in both or the columns you're returning if the data exists in both of your sets then that will be returned using the union all operator as opposed to union which we will be going over in another video so we'll be covering the differences of union and union all operators uh, and what the difference is between the two now one example I wanted to go over because you might be thinking to yourself when am I ever going to use this uh, and one thing is to generate sample data so if I wanted to generate loads of names and I had various names in different tables I could use this within a select into statement so I could generate data for that obviously that's not going to apply in a production scenario um, but one thing that is common is when you want to combine result sets is when you want to manipulate a set um, and do some work on that and maybe two sets independently and then combine the results of those so you could have a table and you've got a certain flag within that table and if that flag is set you want to perform, perform certain operations on that and then if the flag isn't set you just you don't need to do anything you just want to return that result so after you've performed the manipulation you bring the results back and combine them back with the old results which is what we're going to go over in, in in this example with looking at temporary tables as well now we could go through this example there are other ways to do it with a simple case statement but for the purposes of this i'm going to split our results from one table into two temporary tables and then combine the results back. So for this example I'm just going to open up a new query window and again we're going to run a select to return all of the data from our customers table. So the example I'm going to go through now, let me just have a look at the date of birth column. So what we're going to say is if the date of birth of the customer, if the customer is over 40 years old uh, we're going to apply a discount rate if they're under 40 we, we're still going to apply a discount rate but it's going to be a different amount so we're going to take those two results split we're going to take this one table split it into two result sets perform some uh, manipulation on the data and then bring it back to give us a discount rate so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to select into a temporary table so I'm just going to select all into in fact no I'm not going to select all I'm just going to I'm just going to work with the first name uh, the last name and the date of birth um, into uh, so I'm going to select those columns into we'll say under 40s uh, under 40 we'll call our temporary table and we'll say from our customers table where so we're going to do uh, where date of birth and we'll do a date diff function on here so we're going to say year date of birth and then we're going to use current timestamp or you could use get date current timestamp is specific to sorry get date is specific to SQL I'm um, gonna say less than 40 and then we're gonna say another temporary table 
first name, last name. Don't worry about the case sensitivity. And we're going to select that into another table called uh, over 40, but it's also we're going to include anybody that will be 40 as well. Um, so that's going to be from our customers. And again, we're going to use a date diff function year, and it's just going to be the reverse of what we've got in the initial uh, our other ta uh, other temporary table insert. So we're going to say, well, greater than or equal to 40. Uh, and then I'll just run a select from those just to show you that we have got the data in there. Uh, so we will be moving on to doing some other videos with temporary objects in SQL. Um, so s coming to the channel soon, depending on when you're watching this. Um, so there, we've, we've, we've split our customers table into two temporary tables. One shows the under 40s, one's called over 40, but it shows anybody that's 40 or over. So again, we could have done this manipulation with a case statement, but we're just going to work with temporary tables for now. So quite a common example with having to combine sets is you split the initial set, carry out some manipulation work, and then combine those sets back together using a set operator. Um, and we're going to just say 40 as discount that's quite high actually isn't it we'll say 10 and then in terms of the over 40s we're going to offer them 15 15 as discount okay so if we run those two again that should give us a new column called discount and then what we're going to drop in there is a union all operator so we've split those together. Sorry, split those together. We've split those two that table apart into two result sets, drop them into temporary tables based on the date of birth, their age, and then we're going to add a discount based on which, which table they're in, and then we're going to combine those two result sets back together using a union all, and then I'm going to order by the first name. In fact, I'm going to change this. I don't know why I called that column C underscore first name but uh, might change that at some point so I'm just going to drop that I don't need to do it on the second input again because it's just going to pick up the column names from our first input and there we have our result set combined of the different discounts like I said I could have just simply used a case statement for that um, but I did want to go through an example of where we have to split one set into two or maybe more, apply some manipulation and then combine that result set back. I hope you have enjoyed that video guys looking at union all. Remember those rules that the um, data types must be compatible and the number of columns and order of columns must match as well. Uh, we're going to move on to some other videos on union, accept and intersect as well. Check out the other videos on my channel if you're interested in any SQL work, business intelligence or data analysis. I will have a lot of content on there. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do click that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.